Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Thursday, April 25th. We Markets had an inside day uh, following the three days up uh, from Friday's op options expiration. Uh, pretty much flat. Dow down 43, uh, NASDAQ flat, down 73 cents, S&P up a penny, uh, gold up seven, uh, following through from an oversold bounce um, from last week's uh, uh, major debacle. Um, now, where do we go from here? The, so the thing is, okay, we've rallied now three days, um, four days actually, and the markets are uh, putting an inside day from the previous day. Uh, is that a pause for another move higher, or do we tend to go lower? Well, I think today's going to be a, a pretty big day for the markets, and uh, and we could have an inside day. There's two scenarios that are that are going to play out, and there's always two scenarios um, <laughs> to the markets. Unfortunately, uh, if the markets put in another doji and another doji candle, and we kind of consolidate, maybe even today, tomorrow, uh, we could easily be headed for more upside. Um, if in fact the markets do sell off today and puts we put in a, a red engulfing candle, that could be a good pattern for an evening star um, bearish formation. And uh, the markets could literally have put in a top. And the reason why I say that because that marks a lower high from the previous high we made several weeks back. And I'll show that to you in the charts. So I think today's going to be a, a real uh, important day for the markets. And we'll see. Um, I had a question and I wanted to um, put out there. I had a question uh, for several guys and they said, you know, how is this market relentlessly bid up? Why is this market always bid up? Well, Unfortunately, you know, the United States is the place to be, and um, what happens is when you have all these central banks um, devaluing their currency, and uh, such as, I'll give an example, like the yen, um, they're doing what they have to do for their uh, um, economy, so the yen is getting decimated, and money is flowing out of Japan and into our markets. So regardless of the fact that um, earnings weren't, aren't so great, uh, we have a lot of misses in guidance and revenue, and the market continues to be bid up. And we have a few days of sell-off, and we everybody buys the dip. So that's really what's happening. Money's flowing into our country, and people need to um, convert dollars, their dollars, to U.S. dollars, and money gets put to work. There's no other way to put it unless uh, you have a, a large amount of money you want to hold um, real estate. You can't put your money in the bank because there's no yield out there. Uh, bonds aren't really doing much as far as yields con as that that's concerned. So the uh, the only game in town is the stock market. So that's why this market is well bid up. And um, I th there's no question that you know you can only be bid up so much. Um, and here's from November. I mean it's it's a little bit ridiculous that you get a couple of small days of pullbacks and the market comes right back to where it was again. So um, uh, I do feel that a correction is imminent. And I do feel that a correction is near. Now, we could have literally a three, four-day correction, a deeper correction than what we had here, which I don't even call this a correction, um, go lower to 1,500 and still be within um, a bull uh, trend. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind, which I think would be even more healthier for the markets if the markets were to correct 8 or 10%. Um, shake out all the week longs and then rally back to new highs and into the 1600 in the S&P, which I think that that's healthy. But continuous grind like this is uh, not healthy for the markets at any given day. You know, uh, I wouldn't rule out a flash crash or uh, anything for that matter. All you need is one real bad uh, disaster, God forbid, or uh, a bad economic news or a geopolitical event, um, and then that's it. The markets will sell off. People are going to say, that's enough. I'm taking some profits. So, um, Well, anyway, enough of the um, soapbox. I just wanted to kind of point out my views and my, my what my feelings are on the markets. Um, I really take an unbiased approach, and I just look at what the technicals are telling me uh, and where we are. So we are in an inflection point right now uh, where we have a, a higher low from from a few weeks back, and now we have this lower high from here and um, we're going to really see what happens today I think today tomorrow is going to be a, a, um, a real a real good deciding factor on do we continue the uptrend or do we uh, get into this corrective phase that we're everybody's looking for and remember when everybody looks for something it usually doesn't happen at least not right away okay here's our NIMO now our NIMO is creeping up here guys right we're still not in this overboard territory so we need to get above this 5560 break up even touch, break above it, and then roll, and that would give you a good um, oversold, overbought reading, excuse me, where you can go out and literally um, 
you know, short the market with stops over the previous high, um, and you could take a punch at it because uh, that's actually what I like to do in these areas here. When the markets are just in here, like it's been since February, um, I really uh, it, it, it's it's very difficult or or crazy actually to be looking to short the market when you really don't have a signal other than just an overbought reading, which is not a sell signal. All right, so let's take a look at the S and P. Uh, stocks above the 50-day moving average. We are getting some movement, but we're not getting movement like the indexes are. So if you're an indexer uh, and you're looking at the ETFs and you're you know trading ETFs only, then you're doing pretty good. But if you're trading individual stocks, it's kind of quiet out there. Um, in the last few days, it's been kind of quiet. Okay, so let's take a look at the VIX. And the VIX did get our sell signal, right? We, we busted out of the Bollinger Bands. We came back in the previous day. That's a buy signal for the equities, guys. I'm telling you, it works all the time. If you just take a look at here, 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 and here, and you'll tell you, you just plot it out yourself on the VIX, um, and then you could easily get uh, a nice buy and sell signal for equities. So now we're back here. We did get a black candle. Marks in decision. Could be a reversal. Today's going to be the deciding factor. So we'll see what happens here. All right, now um, I want to go and touch on um, a couple things with the dollar and uh, some currency. Um, the dollar, like I mentioned just before about how people buy our dollars, convert them from their dollars into our U.S. dollars to buy stocks and real estate, whatever. Uh, this looks like to me that um, the dollar is going to be picking up some momentum. If that happens, I think the euro starts to sell off, and I think equities probably will at least in the, in the, in the short term sell off because right now we do have an inversely correlated um, relationship to equities versus the U.S. dollar, right? Euro up, equities up, dollar down. So uh, right now the dollar here is really looking good, um, and we take out this 83.31 and then the 83.66 high, that big spike up. Um, then I think uh, dollar is going to really start to chug along here. Eventually, it will change, right? Eventually, the uh, U.S. dollar will rally with equities. But right now, that's not the case. So let's just keep that in mind where we are in the short term. Now, the reason why um, I, I say that um, this equity markets are bid up here in the States is one of the reasons, clearly, is look at the yen. Now, the Bank of Japan did what they have to do to intervene so um, uh, they could uh, get their economy back chugging along. Um, and they finally uh, uh, got into this big asset purchase program, and now money's coming out of the yen, as you can see. Now, the yen is, and I don't know why that it ever was, uh, one of the safe haven currencies uh, along with the U.S. dollar and the Swiss franc. Now, the Swiss franc is pegged to the euro. Um, uh, still fighting the 120 mark, and then you have the yen now really not a safe haven currency anymore because the Bank of Japan intervened. So what do you have? You have the almighty dollar now. The, the buck is the, the buck is the place to be. So money's coming out, putting money into the uh, into, into dollars and making it work for for them. So that's the reason one of the reasons why the yen um, is at their levels here. We are deeply oversold, so I do think the yen starts to pop up and any kind of risk off. Uh, days you have, you're going to have the yen start to um, uh, uh, spark up a little bit here, come alive again, and we'll, we should have a good pop up. Not that it's going to be a reversal in any stretch of the means, but you get a big spike in the yen, you're going to get some follow through uh, to the upside, which would actually put um, uh, a damper on uh, the uptrend in equities. All right, so let's take a look at gold on a weekly chart, and then I'm going to get into uh, some of the uh, daily charts here. Uh, gold, bad, bad bad price action here. We did have a little bit of a bounce, as you can see on the weekly chart, but this is really bad. Charts are broken down, um, and I think this is just a dead cat bounce for at least a retest. Now, if we can get a retest of the lower high here on a weekly chart from this spike lower, then I think you have something where maybe for a shot for risk reward that you're going to take a better I'd rather buy it down at the 1350 area with a stop down here uh, than up in here we didn't even get above the tw uh, the 200 day moving average now gold is up in the pre-market and we could easily get that before the end of the week so we do have two full trading days so just a word of caution on on um, on gold now let me take a let me show you the GLD where everybody likes to trade and we didn't even get back to the 23% retracement on the uh, on the Fibonacci. Now we do have this big gap area of resistance, and we're into it now. So even if it gets to the, let's say right up into the 143.50, you're still in between the 23 and the 38% retracement. Where I think if it even gets up to this area here, I think it's going to be a real ideal spot to at least uh, initiate a short 
for um, a move lower one more time. And then we'll see where that happens. But as you can see here, we really we, we busted up. And now we have a couple of, we have like three little indecision candles, uh, some doji. So really need to break out above here and then to start really chugging along at least to the 140, 145 area in gold. Now, um, the uh, oil markets are actually interesting. OPEC, OPEC said that uh, you know gold should, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, oil should be at least 100 bucks a barrel, and we had a big, big move to the upside. Um, so now we are at this 38 percent retracement. Gold is still, um, excuse me, I keep saying gold. Uh, the the um, USO oil is still in the downtrend, but it's going to be interesting to see in the coming weeks where um, oil starts to uh, move to. Um, obviously, if there's a risk off and we do get some sort of a sell-off, then oil would eventually just kind of roll back over, unless there is something geopolitical that's involving the oil markets, um, then it would actually kind of shy away from what equities are doing. But right now, uh, risk on, risk off is really the, uh, the theme here. And look what happened. You have a nice big move up to the upside. So I'm watching the oil markets in the coming days and weeks to see if we got a trade out of that. Now, um, last week I, I showed you this inverse inverted head and shoulders and I said guys only a 10 minute but you know it, it doesn't give a bunch of weight but watch it if you guys are indexing again if you guys are trading S&P which I do not um, you could see here uh, that we had our target hit so it was a nice little uh, nice little trade if you guys uh, uh, took that little 10 minute um, spider trade here and there so now we did hit our target and it's interesting on the uh, on a couple of uh, on some of these charts which I'm again we're getting into right now lower high here off the off our uh, um, uh, arrows. Now, as you can see here, we do have our doji, right? We have an inside day from the previous day. So if we get another move low when we take out yesterday's low and we get a red candle, that's going to put that evening star bearish pattern in. So if that's the case, then I think you're going to at least retest the low uh, last week's, of uh, this week's low, actually, excuse me, uh, last week's low. And then um, if a break below that, you're going to get this pivotal support area and then a 200-day moving average, which coincides pretty much of this um, big uh, gap up area here. So this is gonna be the spot guys, here, here, and here. So label them on your charts and watch them, watch them during the day. Cause if we do start to get uh, some uh, downside momentum, these are the pivotal support areas that I want you to watch for. It's gonna be key. Now, um, 60 minute chart, we have this uh, head and shoulders pattern that I marked. Again, only bearish when we hit, when we break this neckline, 153.75. Uh, and that is good, really going to be the start of this uh, bearish reversal, if, in fact, that does happen. Right now, it has not happened. Uh, we have been chugging along for the last four days. Um, so this is going to be the big area right here, guys, is going to be that 153.75. And here is the 30-minute spiders with the Bollinger Bands. And look at this here. And I highlighted this. I, I made the Bollinger Bands a little thicker. This is energy energy is building guys for another move it doesn't tell you where and how big or uh, what direction but this is going to be the move we're looking for here guys so be aware this could happen any day today or tomorrow if in fact we do break down the Bollinger Bands are pitching signaling a bigger move to come so I wanted to point that out to you guys this morning okay here's a 30 minute chart with the um, with our Fibonacci retracements we hit the 76.4 percent right to the penny just about to the penny guys Look at that. If symmetry doesn't uh, um, count, look at that. That's excellent. So 76.4%. Let's see what happens today. So that's why I think today might be a pretty big day in the markets. XLF. XLF right here back into the um, bearish rising wedge. Again, only bearish if it breaks below the uh, uh, lower trend line. So um, banks picked up momentum again, which is a good sign. Diamonds here. Again, inside day for the Dow. And you can see pretty much uh, Russell did not have an inside day, so Russell gained a little bit momentum, which is nice. Nice to see if you were bull, right? Risk on, so you want to see Russell gaining momentum. And transports here um, did have an outside day, but just about barely. We're still below this trend line, so really I want to see if you're a bull, you want to see the transports break above this lower uptrend line and start to regain momentum to the upside, okay? That's going to be a real factor here. Apple uh, lost a little bit of luster after the... Uh, after the uh, earnings announcement, sold off in the uh, post-market after earnings, sold off again in the uh, pre-market yesterday morning, gained a little bit of momentum to the upside, and then really kind of sold off and leveled off around uh, where it was uh, the previous day. So Apple has a lot of work to do, and guys, I'm telling you, um, 
Apple here, if it couldn't get enough momentum to break out of 420 to get at least a 440, um, I think that uh, Apple's still weak, and I think that it needs to really flush into the 350 to 375 area before really reevaluating and start looking to take um, a longer-term uh, trade in Apple. And then um, SMH, nice to see technology start to be coming back again. And then lastly is the Qs, and of course, Qs had an inside day. Um, heavily weighted in Apple. All right, guys, that's really about it. We'll see what happens today. Uh, mark those pivotal support areas in the spiders, guys. It's it, the guys, people that are trading during the day behind the screens. It's going to be really, really important in the next coming days. So we don't really are at an inflection point. We're going to really need to see this market either break to the upside or we start making lower highs and lower lows. And then I think the correction is imminent. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.